Hello, this is Eric flying solo again with a bonus issue. So everybody, today is an exciting day because tonight we're going to get to see the dancing detective at Deadly Tango. But before we do that, we have a great conversation with Will Kemp, the star of The Dancing Detective. So without further ado, let's roll into it. So, Will, we're going to go back to your early days, all right? So oh, my goodness. All, okay. the, all the other guys were out there, you know, playing football and cricket, and you're doing mm-hmm. dance lessons. Were you just, like, brilliant because you're, like, they're out there hanging out with sweaty boys, and you are going to dance lessons to hang out with all the girls? Were you just, like, with that smart sweaty as Sweaty girls? <laughs> hey, sweaty girls are better than sweaty you boys. Know, uh, well, do you know what? It's it, it's a personal preference, but it's... um. Yeah, there was definitely this is like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm old enough to say this, because when I was dancing, it wasn't, there wasn't the shows that are now on TV, it wasn't as popular or as cool or as, um, yeah, it, there was definitely times where I would get bullied, because I was the one in tights, and I was the one, you know, dancing. But yes, I, I felt that I was very smart. And there was a point where, as a, um, nine 10 11 12 year old boy my body was developing I, I was getting stronger and more athletic than a lot of classmates um so there was a tipping point when they would then start to go down and start smoking and hanging out and partying and i was going to the dance classes every day my parents i was brought up in king's langley in hertfordshire a tiny little village and my parents bless them would drive me to the neighboring town every day after school and Saturdays on virtually the whole day so uh, by the age of 13 I knew exactly what I wanted to do and a lot of other people I went to school with they sort of had no idea and they were into you know potentially smoking weed and all the normal kid stuff unfortunately um and I felt I had a passion already. I had a clear idea that this is what I was good at. And if I worked hard at it, I could achieve something that I could potentially enjoy for the rest of my life. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'll say I'm 55 and there's many days I still don't know what I'm, uh, I'm wanting to do. So <laughs> kudos well, to you're you are doing great at what years you're doing old. so far. So, Keep going right. what you're doing so far. So a couple of years ago, my wife and I signed up for the Arthur Murray dance lessons, and I was so stinking oh. bad at it that Sasha, our instructor, I think quit because he just couldn't handle me anymore. So what tip would you give somebody who is so like rhythmically challenged as myself? Because you obviously have grace, and I'm guessing a certain part of that is just innate. But give me give me a little tip so I can, at the next well, wedding, think- not look terrible. <laughs> At, at your next uh, wedding are you planning to marry again or oh, no no that i attend <laughs> i'm kidding I, I sort of think you've answered your own question there because you say that you see a great grace in me and that that must be innate i think the key is to find your own thing what is it that makes you unique yes you want to conform to the dance style that you're learning and of course you want to adapt and learn that style the best you can but how would you do it what's what 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 is unique about eric that that uh, that you can bring to the waltz to the tango to the foxtrot to the boogie to whatever it is and if you tap into that you will look the coolest guy in the room because you'll genuinely be what it is that makes you you Okay, so you're saying like that old, whatever that saying, uh, dance like nobody's watching. Dance like nobody is watching. I love, love it. it. All right. Exactly. Okay, so you've got this mystery coming out, The Dancing Detective, mm-hmm. as we just mentioned, The Deli, T- Deli Tango. And this is your project, right? So yeah. tell me a little bit about, it's got to be, be a great, you know, huge different thing for you getting into mm-hmm. developing a show. A little bit about what inspired you and in that journey of what it was like going from behind the camera to actually creating this entire thing. 
Yeah, no, it's a great question. And um, I'm very fortunate in that the writer, Aubrey Day, and I have known each other for a long, long time. And we have a lot of projects that we've been talking about. And really, honestly, this was just one of them. But when you find a writer that knows you so well, and and we, we complement each other in terms of our approach to um, characters and stories, and also the business. Um, but for me, overall, this was a huge learning curve. And I've learned an awful lot about what goes on in the production, pre-production, and the development of a project, the running of a network, and just everything that happens outside of an actor, basically, where you you go for an audition potentially, and then you do another audition maybe, or you get the job and then you turn up and you do, and you prepare as an actor and you come and do the job and then you go back home. I felt as if I didn't have a day off. It's, it's, it's a lot more encompassing, but you're a lot more involved. And I felt that during the production, certainly, it was a very intense period. I loved it. I absolutely would love to do it again. Um, and I do have a passion for the industry and I do have a passion for telling stories and I have a huge respect for every department, the directing, the producing, the set design, the costume design, all of these things are so important. Um, the cinematography, how it's lit, because it, it becomes more than just one job. It, it becomes you're so invested in the product and the storytelling and the characters. And I love that and I hope to do a lot more of it. That's awesome. So what made you think about doing a mystery versus a rom-com or something like that? Yeah, it's it's true. I I felt that it was something that um could continue. It could be more than just this one. If if we get the opportunity to do more, we have so many great ideas and I feel that I've always loved those retro TV shows, Remington Steel, Heart to Heart. Um and the, and actually we reference a lot of those tv shows because the character awesome. i play sebastian moore is an actor and a dancer and is and is um when uh lacy chubert's character is uh put undercover in malta to solve a suspicious murder she has to go into a corporate world and um uh the Aston International, the company, uh, the CEO who suspiciously dies, um, they run a ballroom dance competition for all their top executives. And she has to convince me to go undercover in the competition. And while she's there, find out who the suspects are and what happened. So enter my character, who then teaches her how to dance and goes undercover with her as her husband. So Sebastian you know, takes this on with absolute glee because it's a character. It's like all the TV shows he's watched with his aunt Vera and, and there's referencing to Jessica Fletcher and all of these wonderful TV shows. And if that's the joy of this is there's a lot of humor and comedy and sort of throwback winks and nods to those wonderful, I think, TV detective shows. I love it. I can't, I can't wait. Uh, and it's going to be later today. So that's super exciting. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So Hallmark is notoriously budget conscious, yet you are over there in Malta shooting. Tell us, like, now, was this because you went and got Lacey and Lacey pretty much owns Hallmark? And as she says, you know, I want to <laughs> shoot wherever on the moon, Hallmark's like thumbs up. Was that like a little, once again, game plan? But how do you get to shoot well, in Malta? It's true. Our producer, Lee Bristow, who I've worked with before, that's what he does. He, he, and, and that's what interested me as well. I guess being British, being English and coming to work for an American uh, network. Um, and um, we've shot in Belgium together that's with Lacey point, and yeah. Leaf. We've, um, I've filmed in Romania. I haven't actually done a Hallmark film yet in the US. We shot in Vancouver. So um, Lacey is adored uh, and, and is, has really earned, I think this is her 36th film for Hallmark. And Lacey and I love working together. She was the only person that was going to be in this. I, she's the only person I ever approached. And I felt that because we had 
sort of earn this trust together through Christmas Waltz and also uh, Love, Romance and Chocolate. Um, this would be the perfect vehicle for us. And I knew that I always wanted to do also the murder and mysteries. And it's a wonderful chance for Lacey to play the detective. So we have a female right. detective. So that's already new as far as I know, like a proper, that's her job. She's a phenomenal detective, very smart, uh, very capable, very matter of fact, maybe needs to learn how to play well with others. And that's where my character comes in. So I think for Lacey, it was a wonderful opportunity. For us together, it's a fantastic opportunity. And the location of Malta is down to the producer, Leif Bristow. And I think going forward, if we get the opportunity, we will always look to exotic locations. We'll always try to think outside the box. Because the wonderful thing about being able to do that is that the audience feel as if they pack their bags and they come with us. So whether it's Bruges or, or uh, Romania or now Malta, you do feel as if you're taking an audience on that journey. And we show it off to the best possible advantage as well. That's actually awesome. Um, so earlier this year, we did a podcast of 10 things we most wanted to see. One of them <laughs> was an international spy uh, movie and we had actually mm -hmm. you starring in it, it was an as an mi5 mi6 whatever agent oh yeah um in our Tell little one. but the other one that we wanted to see was the female detective because there used to be the gourmet detective that had um a female detective but for the most mm -hmm. part they are the ma males are the uh the detectives mm. so this is mm. you're, you're kind of getting two things uh that we wanted off our list so we greatly thank you for that well i'm i i'm glad i could oblige because it was a lot of fun and i'd love to do it again so all right so we're speaking of and you, you mentioned this is your third movie with her um the second one where you're dancing so mm -hmm. one of the things is you, you you kind of have established like you said this relationship with you personally but also with the fans mm -hmm. And so when mm. it was announced that you guys were coming out, like she has her, her connection with Brennan Elliott, that's really great. But mm. it seems like you have also now great. created yeah. a similar type one where people just want to see the two of you together. So um, one of the things I have to ask though, is because it is your second one, how is Lan Lacey's dancing now versus mm. the Christmas waltz? Is she like, you taught her so much the first go around that she's just a pro? Mm. She's, well, the two movies are very, very different to begin with. Um, and I think what's always fun is finding new challenges. So with Christmas Waltz, we learned the waltz predominantly. Um, and I was able to give a little bit of a nod to Gene Kelly in this sort of singing in the snow almost, singing in the rain type thing. Right. Um, with and, and, and it was paramount for me to get the same choreographer. So we worked with uh, Jean uh, Roux on... Uh, the dancing detective as well so i felt that we had uh, a trust and a language uh, between us we'd already learned the wall but lace is phenomenal she will just jump in wholeheartedly she will she's fearless which i love i love to work with people that just jump in and give their all immediately so lacy will say in all of the interviews oh i don't really dance. i've always had a don't think she's great she there would there was one day which springs to mind where um, we are, are on the dance floor. There's music playing. We, we're remembering the choreography. We're trying to count the rhythm. And we're speaking dialogue about the case, right? All this information. And I was pretty confident in rehearsals. We didn't have too many, but I felt pretty okay. It came to the day and I and I just suddenly they turned off the music because they need to record the sound, right? The technical thing. And so I realized that I was relying on the music and wasn't counting. So Lacey stepped up like the pro that she is and started to whisper the counts to me while I was speaking so that I wouldn't go out of rhythm. So Lacey helped me. That's awesome. On this particular day. And so in answer to your question, Lacey is a brilliant dancer and she can do she can do anything she sets her mind to. If she has to learn how to uh, surfboard or whatever in a, uh, a movie, she'll do it. She's done it. So I think that going forward, I, I'm going to have to find ways of challenging her even more, I think. 
that, <laughs> excuse me. That's, a, that's an awesome story. Awesome story. All right. Um, this isn't really a question, but it's just me admiring your life. You've got a beautiful wife and then you get paid to I kiss people that. like Lacey <laughs> and Resh Machete. Like that, my, my preview going into Jolly Good Christmas was just like the two of you guys are so insanely attractive that that movie just could not fail. So I just like imagine, I assume you just full of gratitude and not obviously a woman is everything that there, but it seems like you got a pretty good life there. Will. I think the key to things is to remind ourselves constantly that, that there is somewhat of a choice. And I do feel very, very grateful. Um, I'm very lucky to have the people around me that um, love me unconditionally that support me in a journey, which is, can be very, um, very isolating, can be very personal, um, and also can be somewhat selfish. If I'm working or if I'm preparing, I'm not maybe, you know, out and about and drinking and eating as much as I would if I haven't got time to socialize because of the work. So you need people around you that really understand that and they understand that it's coming from a a craft and a passion and something I mean I, I love what I do I genuinely love it and I wouldn't have it any other way but am I grateful of course I am hugely grateful to the people um, my family and close friends that support me all the time and have been there for you know some since I was born of course but others over 20 years so I'm very, very grateful and will never take any of those people for granted ever. All right. All right. So in the, by the way, great answer. And you seem like a good guy. <laughs> <It's true. so. laughs> but um, so in the trailer, there's that little joke where you do the stew with the American accent. Lacey's like, no, yeah. just go British. Now, was that like a little nod to the Jolly Good Christmas? Because <laughs> there was a lot of chatter about your american accent in that movie so was that like it, a nod or is it, it was, a coincidence you know you're very astute and eric you you've you've gone even further up in my in my um estimations of you definitely i think it was a fun thing to play with um and it, it that fascinates me because i've played americans a lot and um I can understand. It's it, it's weird for me when people say you didn't have an accent in that, and I was like, no, I did. I was playing an American, so I had an accent. And people, the response is very interesting. I mean, people felt somewhat cheated because I think an audience of this kind likes to see an Englishman play an Englishman, and that's what makes me unique potentially in this format world. Um, as an actor, I take on different challenges all the time, and the accents are only a small part of that. But to your point, I had a really good fun. And the clip which has come out, there's a bit more to that which you didn't see, which um, is fun to subvert people's expectations and potentially to play with the sort of, um, definitely the character of Sebastian is very true to who he is. He's an actor. So he's trying on accents. He's 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 trying them out. He's going to hone one of them, and he's looking at this whole um, mystery and this whole case as an opportunity to role play. And so it was a wonderful opportunity to do an American accent. Uh, and I love that you that you made that comparison. I think it's very very smart of you. Very astute. Uh, oh, right, thank you. I'll I'll say I didn't have a problem with the accent in the movie, so I was like, whatever. Well, and, and then and I didn't. I love doing accents. Like say, but yeah, and I think you're right. I think people just a lot of fans just love you and your charm of being the British guy. So which know, is they, they, wonderful. They, 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 they and, didn't get yeah. to see that, but whatever. Yeah. Like I said, well, yeah. It's acting, yeah. No, but. I mean, it was it was in the script. It's what Ron Oliver's character um demanded it's what the network wanted me to do that time so everyone was on board oh that's what you I forgot do, right? that was ron oliver i just interviewed him yeah. he is oh he's great absolutely he's awesome nice. he is hilarious he is awesome he's a trip brilliant yeah. dude brilliant um yes okay so 
we hear stories about actors who, you know, keep the cool stuff, like their cool leather jacket or the comfy jeans from a movie that they're on. Mm. Now you're driving this bitchin' Hillman Minx, right? <laughs> Any chance you kept that? So that's like right now in your garage, you're like, oh, I'll just. Oh, keep that would one, be guys. fun. That would be fun. It was very temperamental, that car, actually. I have, I have a story very quickly about that is that the first time I sat in it, there's a scene in the movie, which is the first time that the characters sort of, without ruining cross paths. And we did the most takes. All I had to do was get my cue, wait, and then drive by, honk, horn, and say, um, what did I say, like, um, I don't know, watch out, or something. I can't remember. I couldn't get this car to start. It was running. <laughs> And literally, it would, I would wait, 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 wait. And they'd say, go. And I would go, junk, And it would stall. And we were in the streets of Malta. And slowly, a crowd began to gather. Because they thought, a movie's being done. Who is it? Tom Cruise, is it a big film? And it was, no, it was kind of me in a car. And I've never been more humiliated. We did it 10 times. And I just couldn't figure it out. And the guy kept on coming up to me and saying, it's in gear. I said, yes. It was in the pedals. Was I, was I clunking on the clutch or the brake? And I said, no, I know how to drive a car. It turned out that it's so old that the gearbox, I had it in third gear. I was trying to start a Hillman classic car in third gear. I got it going. And if you can imagine, this is the frame. I got the car going. And it was literally going, duh, duh, duh. And I went across frame as and everybody applauded me. That cheered me. I awesome. finally got it to go and everyone then applauded and it was great. But I it, I've never been more embarrassed in my life. So to be honest, I, I'm not sure I wanted that car after that. It looks so good though. It does look it good. Is it, it's a great right? image. And driving along that coast, we just did a loop where, where we were. We were literally going up and down. And the backdrop of that particular clip with trying out all the accents, I love that. I think that looks so classic. And it's a different look. I've never seen anything like that on Allmark. It really did look cool, I thought, and classic. And we, we definitely achieved what we were after with that shot. Yeah, that's an awesome story, though, about the car being uh, <laughs> kind of the clunker. There's... Didn't look it, but... Driving I'll it. try to release that clip. I'm. I have it. I have a copy of that take, and I'll try to get the network to allow me as a. Once it's aired, it's a beautiful blooper. All right. There were lots of bloopers on this because we had so much fun. Okay. Last question. Yeah. So a lot of uh, fans and Hallmark mysteries are frustrated because, and you've kind of touched on a little bit, but that they get this movie, they love the characters and with mysteries versus the rom-com, they want to see more because they want to see these characters develop and see the stories yes. go. And you did touch on some of your ideas. Is there, and can you reveal it all? Like, do you at least have approval to do at least one more of them? Or is it like, do it, we'll see, cross yeah, the well, fingers. That was what was attractive back to one of your earlier questions was that with this we we get more of a slow burn on the relationship right so you get yeah. the opportunity to see these characters in more than just one film more than one case more than one country and there's nothing official this one hasn't even aired yet right um but but i i would love to think that if it does well and everybody wants to do more then aubrey dan i have got a load of ideas just waiting i mean uh, it's a little bit complicated at the moment in terms of the st strike and everything. Right. I, I don't quite know what position uh, people are in, in in that specifically. But as an overall general answer, uh, if people want and we can do more, we have bags of ideas. And I think it would be very entertaining and very um, plausible that you would see Constance Bailey, Lacey's character, entering into Sebastian Moore's world and, and then the reverse. So that there's this wonderful, playful um, counterbalance of whose world does the other one really operate in and how can they help each other? And also, how does that relationship develop? Do sparks begin to fly? Do they begin to agree there is a, an attraction? Um, who knows? Okay. All right, but it wasn't a one where it was like a 
three film commitment, but that's okay. We, Not we, at this point. I'll we are be totally honest you. about you. Yeah, please spread the word. If people love it, let us know because at the end of the day, that's why we make these. We make these for an audience to sit at home and and travel in their in their living rooms to these exotic locations to have fun watching these these uh, fun adventurous characters go on these you know crazy murder mysteries and i would love nothing more than to do a bunch more now where where are you, where are you at now you're going to be able to actually watch it tonight so yeah at, at the moment i i'm in los angeles at the okay. moment i've just come back from utah doing that film i was going to be on a plane um and i i'm not quite sure if they've canceled my flight so i'll either be t be live tweeting on the plane or I'll be live tweeting wherever I am. Okay. So I'm I'm going to try and do the best I can to engage because I'm I haven't tweeted with the sleuthers, so I want to see how people yeah. are trying to work out the case, and I love to hear how people are enjoying the movie as well. So the one thing I will say as we uh, as we sign off is the passion for your Hallmark movies, as you know, is massive, right? People just love mm. their Hallmark movies. It's lovely to hear. When yeah. you get to the mysteries. It is mm. that times 10 and it's, it's crazy. So as you enter this new world, and I think it's because yeah. people do get to learn and grow with these characters as, you know, multiple ones happens. That's mm. why I was asking, hopefully we do get to see three, four, yeah, five, no, and six I, and that multiple was, episodes. The, the, that, that was part of the, uh, part of the attraction originally was that, that if we get it right and we have the opportunity to do more, mm. there's so much more, richness and and countries we can explore and and uh cases and also dances that uh, that'll be the trick exactly okay well well thank you very much for joining me today thank you eric this it's was a awesome pleasure. Yeah, i can't wait to watch the movie thank you very much for all your support and for everybody watching be there watch the dancing detective deadly tango let us know what watch you it, think watch it twice so good watch it, three see it times. twice perfect <laughs> all right so, bye -bye. thank you my friend bye Okay, everyone, there you go. You heard it from Will. We got to watch it not once, not twice, but three times. So let's all tune in tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. Over here on the West Coast, it's at 6 o'clock. I am so excited for this one. I think Will, you know, I, I was excited beforehand, but after talking to him, I am even more excited. You can just feel his passion in this project. Um, you know, the chemistry between him and Lacey is just off the charts. Loved hearing a little bit of those behind the scenes stories, the, you know, the finicky car or Lacey actually helping Will dance, who would have thought? So I think this one has all the things we want in a mystery, great location, a fun plot. It sounds like, you know, like you said, there's going to have some humor. So once again, not once, not twice, three times, everybody right now sign up because that is what we have to do to make sure that we get to keep seeing the mysteries. And I know a lot of us complain, you know, we're like frustrated that a movie gets canceled, a series gets canceled, but the way we can keep that from happening is by continually watching them and doing our part. So there you go. All right, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this conversation as much as I did. Hope you're tuning in tonight. Not once, not twice, but three times. If I mentioned it once, I've mentioned it three times. So there we go. Make sure you're over there following us on Instagram as well. Um, that's where we'll be sharing our content. He said he's going to be live tweeting tonight. So I would encourage you to hop on and, you know, follow that. Those are always fun conversations um, when, when these stars are doing that. So there you go. All right. Until next time, when we get to talk to Skylar Samuels, who's going to be starring as Aurora Tea Garden in the new, uh, prequel we talked to madison yesterday we talked to uh skylar next week we've just had such great guests lately haven't we all right that's it um i miss sydney i can't wait for her to get back uh it's kind of a drag doing these all alone but you got to do what you got to do timing and i'm sure she's having fun over there in europe and doing all that uh honeymoon so there we go all right bye everyone